Welcome back to part 2. In this part we're just going to boot up our new Windows 98 installation from scratch. Um, it's now completely ready to boot up, so boot it up. This is the part where you can you completely veer off this guy, there's not much to do now, the rest is down to your customization, as was quite a bit in the last part. One of the things you should be aware of is mainly the virus. And I talked about it a little bit last time. But this is just quickly here. It's going to just, just find all the default emulated hard hardware which is on the PC. So just let it do that. It'll it'll go through that fine. If it needs the disk, use the disk. Um, yeah, but don't use don't try try not to get the internet out. There. I've done it a few times. It's novel. But recently they cut support for the browser which um, Windows so which YouTube uses. So you can't view YouTube anymore, you can't view most Flash, it's a novel experience, but it's not worth it, because viruses can jump between the two systems. Now when this boots up, you'll hear some sound. I could not record the sound at the time. Um, and if you don't hear sound, that's, you, to sort that out, it's just close and start again. Now here what you want to do is you want to go to Action and then Install. Now when you install this, this allows pointer integration, which is what I was talking about before. And the pointer integration is where you can move your pointer into the into the um, box, and it'll be, and you don't have to, you don't have to click out. It's just like your pointer moves between the two of them seamlessly. Now, for some strange reason, there it seemed like my Windows 98 restarted for no really apparent reason. So let's just sign back in again. It should be relatively fast. I have got a relatively fast system, so it may take a lot longer for you. So let's just boot up. It, it basically makes a CD, and you boot up the CD. Notice I've still got the, the Windows Vista pointer hovering over it. And now, if we restart it now, you'll notice that both that, that that there will no longer be two pointers on the screen. It will all be as one pointer. That's what I'm trying to get at with integrate with the this integration. You can also do file sharing, but most of the stuff, extra stuff, I won't show you what to do. If you, there are a few issues with the setup as it is, and I don't, to be honest, know how to sort those out. And we'll see those settings very shortly. <coughs> now let's um, install Mission Nutrition then. So to do that, insert your disk in the drive <coughs> and or or tie the image, and voila, it all pops up. <coughs> While trying to install a new modem as well, I don't quite know why it's tried to do that. Uh, as you see there, um, my mouse, there's only one mouse, and that mouse can be moved in and out. And you can also drag files onto your desktop from your other desktop, from your actual host PC desktop, and you can drag files to and from them. Now select, stand, select CD, um, no, select standard CD if you continually want to use the CD, which you don't. You want to put it all to the hard drive. Now you'll notice when this process finishes that you'll have lost space on your host hard, host hard drive. That's mainly because when you put files onto here, the files from when you put files onto here, it fills up a little bit of space. The virtual hard disk, which has a limit, but will only be only it's difficult to explain, but you'll find out. It's <clears throat> now down here we've got the um, that's your sharing folders icon which you can select um, the next one left the one to the left of it is floppy disk the one to the left of that is the CD which tells you when the CD is being read, read, um, read and the one left to that is the hard drive which tells you it's been written or read from written to or read from and the one to the right of where my mouse is at the moment is the adapter which tells you when you get to the internet or does the internet connection which or the network connection depending on so just ignore this. This is um, silly Windows being silly. And then we want to go to run the game. Now, this is where my main problem comes in. When I'm recording, it seems like very difficult to get this live resolution switching to work. I haven't found a way of doing that yet. So <clears throat> when you boot it up, the cutscenes don't work very well, but you get that flashing light at the top. Now, there is a way to solve that. It depends on if you're recording at the time, but for now we're going to bump the colours up to true colour 16 and then to true colour 32. That will increase the colour scheme on the computer and that's hope and that makes the game look a lot better. 
Now once again, we go to boot up, once I remember what the hell to do, we go to boot up programs, Kellogg's, Mission Nutrition. And once you've done that, you should notice there's a weird bar at the top. Yay, that's a sign of where you've got the flashing at later on. Now, to change that, you can also drag and drop the window to how you like it. For some reason, I, so this is what I did. Drag, drag the window. So, just shutting down, just to see if that fixes the problem. Which it won't. I have a feeling the problem occurs mainly when you're um, running a, a program which captures, it seems, or if you don't go into the advanced options and set, set, set things up. I'm not quite sure why that happens. And every other um, virtual hard drive I've set up, set up after setting up my first original one that I used for the videos has done this problem. So I guess it's just a problem that they all have. If you know how to fix it, let me know and I will try to set one up again. Anyway, I want to go to Kellogg's this time, Mission Nutrition, to get rid of the flashing bar. Well, I'll ignore that because it it'll tell you that whenever you boot your computer up. Um, notice it trying to do the, um, trying to play the videos. You can play them later and I'll show you how to do that. And what you can do here is you can just simply block it all out by shrinking the size and then scrolling the tab. Notice the game will play a little jerky and laggy when playing it, mainly because you're running two operating systems at once and a game. Here we go, it's all working inside the uh, virtual PC. This is on Vista, clearly, because of the aero bar. And you can see uh, my skill is still atrocious. And one thing that you should never do while playing this game is go into your options and select super, super smooth mode, as I will demonstrate now. Let's go to options, turn super smooth mode on. Turn it on the game somehow just goes completely fast and that's not me speeding it up, that's the truth. So that's one thing you should definitely not do. I also labelled the cheats, you can use those to your advantage and if you want to watch the intro, heading intro at the start will not work, it'll just continually take you to the main screen. Another problem with the um, virtualization. so Yep, I realize this part's been full of I, stuff's happening that I don't know, but, you know, if you follow this process, you will be able to play it. You just have a few problems, but, you know, at least you'll be able to play it better than I can play it currently on my machine and you too. So, go to my computer and navigate through program files and to Kellogg. Then go to Tony2 if you want to boot the game up. If you want to look at the movies, just go to graphics, movies, and load them up. This will load this file, which will play them quite nicely, even, if, even in the... um. Virtualization. You can also drag them across into your main desktop if you want to view them. I don't know why you would, because they're really generic and boring, but whatever. And there we go, the final ones with logos, which really we don't want to see and we could <coughs> would skip anyway. I wonder if you can delete it and it would skip it. So yeah, the next the actual thing that I wanted to show off now was how to boot up custom, or how to boot up maps into the game without having to get there. So double click on map. <coughs> And it'll be greeted here. Now, instead of going to start in game one, which will just load you the first level again, what you want to do is go to your main menu again, and you'll notice it says map one where the tutorial level would have been. Click map one, and that'll take you to that map. Now, each map's different, and there are some maps which haven't been used, but some maps which are bonus levels. So use that, use that how you will. Now, this is really it for the for this tutorial. If there's anything I've missed out or left out, please let me know. But for now. I believe that's the end of this um, tutorial. So thanks for watching, hope this helps, and PM me if you have any problems or anything. Remember, this tutorial does need some knowledge of how to install an operating system, so do not ever leave the Microsoft Installation 98 disk in while you boot a computer up and do those options, as that will reformat and possibly wipe all data and your operating system on your computer, which is not something you want to do. So only have it in during these steps and remove it once you finish using it in the in the process. And as a disclaimer, I'm not responsible for anything you may do to, do to your computer or damage you may receive while doing this guide. So don't try and get funny. If you have any problems, though, feel free to ask or look it up. If you're in, unsure, do not do it, and look elsewhere to make sure you fully understand the, pro, the problem which you are doing. Anyway, thank you for watching. hope this tutorial helped, and I hope you'll enjoy playing Mission Nutrition or Mission Kellogg's in the future.